Hey so divine soul here you're welcome to the channel if this is your first time stopping by please do want to click on the subscribe button to subscribe to the channel so um i have a message here for the collectives all right only take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't as we are on a different path different journey heading to our destination so um so this message is specifically for those of you that are firm believers okay so um if you believe in god as a christian non-christian regardless of your religion muslim um, and you believe in God, you are working in this, you're taking the work of faith, okay, you're trusting God, you're obeying God, you're worshiping God, you are on your divine path, you are on your divine journey, okay, um, in this season, there is something happening in the physical realm, and this is, um, the temptation that is taking place in this season, okay, um, so it's taking me back to the message that I did one week ago, I think so, um, where I talked about you are being targeted, that is, um message where i talked about how they already planned that in the spirit realm but right now in the physical realm it's like it's been made manifest so many of you need to be careful okay this is not the time where you retaliate this is not the time where you revenge this is not the time where you respond where you're so quick to reply this is the time where you think before you reply this is the time where you're meant to use your discernment because what I've received in regards to the vision is that the temptation is on the rise in this season. And those of you that are firm believers of God, the most high, you're believing God for something, a miracle, a blessing. This season is when that temptation begins to happen to see um, if you are really, really in tune with the divine. Okay. If you've been coming across the number 333, this is your sign. All right. Do not conform. So in regards to the message, the previous message where I talked about, um, these entities planning, okay. Um, they are crafting what they would do and how they will carry out their plan. This is the season where you're meant to use your discernment. Okay. This is the season where you're meant to be wise as a, um serpent and become as a dove okay um there are people that will be sent in your life this could be strangers family members friends neighbors okay partners that will try to put you out of character the things that they will say the way they will talk to you the way they will respond to you um would trigger something in you but in this season you have been asked to be still do not be so quick to respond use your discernment all right these are people that are ego trapped these are people that are still attached to demons okay these are people that are unhealed so because they see that you are on a journey to eternal peace because they see that you're on a journey to get into a destination and they don't want you to get there because they are not ready to be there yet they will try to trigger you to take you out of your spot so you need to be careful you need to be mindful in this season not everything needs a response not everything needs um retaliation not everything needs um feedback okay people will say the weirdest thing to you just walk away to protect your peace your energy your sanity all right um this is not the time to show your strength this is the time where you let god fight for you okay so do not fall into temptation do not conform to the plan of the enemy this is the season where they've been sent these people they've been sent as strangers as neighbors as family members they've been sent okay um to disrupt your peace so do not give in be calm as a dove and be wise as a serpent also i'm getting here that for someone specific Specific, okay um you and somebody might engage in a conversation okay this could be like harmless conversation and then it leads to an argument and from argument it leads to fight and from fight it becomes something serious all right and i i received something about somebody um, got beaten okay like somebody used their teeth and beat you by your neck on the neck twice so please be be careful to avoid that okay this is not something that that has happened this is something that is about to happen so i'm giving you i'm alerting you before it happens okay so please be careful for someone specific somebody might try to engage in a fight with you okay to put you out of character that person wants to give you a mark okay but please do not conform do not conform also for someone specific here if you're being led to fast okay and it's like the divine the holy spirit has already given you a date as to when you end your fast and all of a sudden you, you feel this nudge to end the fast before the due date please i beg you do not conform you are closer than you think do not conform all right so if you already have a specific date when you're meant to stop do not conform until that date all right so that's for someone specific 
All right, so moving on to today's message here. The key scripture for today's message is Psalm 23. Okay, so now I'll just break it down so that you understand clearly. Okay, so for those of you that are on your spiritual journey or your soul search journey, I need you to um, understand that you are not suffering. The world, they said you're suffering because you don't have the money, the finance, the good life. They say you're suffering. But I need you to reprogram your mindset and see here that you are not suffering. I need you to reprogram your mindset and see that you are not left behind. I need you to reprogram your mindset and see that others are not ahead of you. They are not doing better than you. You are not slow. You are a work in progress. And because you're a work in progress, your path will certainly be different from the next person's path. If the next person is doing so well financially and right now you're not financially buoyant, this is because you are on a tournament, you're on a journey and the journey um, is fulfilling your soul quest, okay? And you need to understand that before anything, you are a spirit having human experience. And if you focus so much on the 3D realm where you're so focused on money and this and that, I'm not saying it's evil, I'm not saying it's bad, but I'm saying that for a soul on a journey your first mission here your first assignment here in this lifetime is to awaken to who you are to know who you truly are and once you know who you truly are every other thing will be added onto you the first step is awakening to yourself before this finance this opportunity comes to you but if you are chasing anything outside of yourself you are not doing yourself any good you're doing yourself more harm so right now you could have friends that are doing better than you living the good life traveling around the world and you feel like you're left behind your life is not going well your life you're not progressing i am telling you you are a work in progress and as long as you're taking on this authentic path it will look like you're slow but i'm telling you you are not you are on a mission to fulfilling something greater than self for that sole reason you will go through the phases and the phases might not look like what people or the world expect it to look like but this phase that you go through the experiences it is between you and god and because you understand that the sole purpose of this journey is to awaken you to your true self not who the world told you to be but who you are meant to be so as you are walking on this path, I need you to remember that you are on a journey with God. And when you're on a journey with God, you would look, you don't have to understand everything. I think the problem most times is that we try to make sense out of every experience. We try to make sense out of everything. And when you understand that in the process of you becoming, you don't need to understand everything. Just go with the flow, okay? Going with the flow means you're trusting God, you're trusting the universe. And because of that single act of trust, Trust and faith using faith also um, you are also opening the doorway of divine abundance and blessings and I'm not saying this because I want to say it this is not poetry I am saying this because I also have experienced it first and the things that I share with you guys here on the channel this is something that I have also already experienced and is not to make you smile for the day but it's to tell you this is the truth if you are on a journey, it is not your physical self on that journey. It is your soul on a journey. If you are currently on a journey, you might feel confused. You might have days of, um, you know, uncertainty, days of shedding tears, days of anxiety. It is normal. Do not let anybody make you feel like everything that you're experiencing, it means that you're suffering. You are on a soul journey with the Most High God, okay? So I need you to trust this process and enjoy this process. And I'm saying enjoy, not because it comes with so much happiness, it comes with so much confusion, uncertainty, but I'm saying enjoy in the sense that trusting God, trusting the divine that the path that you're on is the right path. And I hope that's clear for somebody. Anyways, let me go back to the Psalms. Okay, Psalms 23. Uh, and Psalms 23 says, The Lord is my shepherd, which clearly means that the Lord is your guide. The Lord is your teacher. The Lord is your director. Okay, um, I shall not want, which clearly means that you shall not lack. You shall not experience lack. So if God is your guide, if you're letting God guide you, if you're letting God lead you, if you're letting God teach you on this journey, 
I need you to trust that you will never lack, which means that everything that you need will be made provision for. And let me also say this. I think most times, right, when people say, oh, God, God doesn't give me my heart desire, God... You might be thinking, this thing is what I want. But God is saying, you don't need this now. Let me give you what you need. So in this season, um, as you're on a journey with God, always know that the things that you desire, the things that your soul needs will be made provision for. You shall never lack as, as long as you are allowing God to be your guide and your teacher. As long as you are letting the Lord be your shepherd, you shall not lack. The only time you experience lack is when you try to be in control, is when you try to be the teacher, is when you try to be in uh, in charge. But once you allow your shepherd, the Lord be your shepherd, the Lord will always provide for you. Verse 2 says, He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. Let me also say this. Emphasis on Psalms 23 verse 1. Number 1 is really, really important, which is the stepping stone, which is the beginning. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my guide. The Lord is my teacher. So which means that the moment you allow God to take your hand and lead you on the journey, you will not experience lack. And he will also make you to lie down in green pastures, which means it will make you to lie down in a nourished land. He will make you to lie down in a fruitful land and when i say lie down is like enjoy be comfortable okay also the color green represents um fruitfulness so which means that as long as you let the lord be your shepherd as long as you let the lord be your guide god will put you in a comfortable place where you enjoy fruitfulness okay and the next one says he leadeth me beside the still waters still waters represent hard times tough times things when things don't move in your life when things are just stagnant god once you let god be your shepherd when once you let the lord be your shepherd your guide God will lead you even in those dark times, even in those trying times, even when things are not moving. God will also lead you through those times. Okay, it's because um, still waters also represents trials and tribulations, dark times. So once you're going through that, as long as you make the Lord your shepherd, as long as you acknowledge the Lord to be your shepherd, that is when God leads you through that hard times, through the trials and the tribulations, okay, through this temptation that is happening right now, as long as you let the Lord be your shepherd, okay. Verse 3 says, He restored my soul, which means He rejuvenates your soul, He awakens your soul, He purifies your soul, and He makes you whole, all right. And also, it says, he leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. As long as you acknowledge the Lord to be your God, okay, he leads you, he guides you to the path that leads to holiness, to the path that leads to righteousness in his name. And when I talk about holiness and righteousness, it's not how people dress on the outside. I'm speaking on the soul level, the spirit, okay. Um, once you allow God to be your guide, he guides you to that path that leads to holiness. He guides you to that path that leads to righteousness. Verse 4 says, Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. So which really means that even when you go through the darkest moments of your life, the ups and the downs, the good and the bad, um, because death represents ending, okay? Not just physical death, but ending of a phase, okay? So even though you go through the end, this could be end of a job, end of a relationship, end of a phase, even though you are being attacked, even when you are being tempted, you will not fear evil. You will not fear the enemies. You will not fear any of those times. Even when you go through times where things are so dark, things are so tough, things are so, you're in your confused state, you don't know what to do. Um, you're having court case, court issues, and you don't know how to get through it. You're having home issues. You're having health issues. Even when you're going through those, those times, you're having money issues, whatsoever dark times that you experience or you're experiencing as long as you are letting god be your guide you are not meant to fear any evil okay because you know that god is with you and he says for thou art with me thy rod and thy staff they comfort me once you let god be your guide you have that assurance you have that confidence that um god is with you the rod and the staff is the tool used to comfort you which means that Sometimes when the rod of the Lord is upon us, right, it's like 
is for correction purpose, right? But because we do not understand that process, it we end up um, dealing with pain, confusion, you know, uncertainty. We start shedding tears, sometimes depression, you know. And you need to understand that not everything is caused by the devil, all right? Some of sometimes the things that we go through is God's way of protecting us, even though we don't understand why that job they said no to us, even though we don't understand why that relationship ended, even though we don't understand why why um, we did not get the things that we prayed for sometimes that's God's protection and you need to be okay with that so the rod sometimes in our lives is to correct us so we don't go to the wrong path but because we do not understand how it works we start crying like God why didn't you give me this person why didn't you give me this job but God is saying you are walking on the wrong path you're not meant to be with that person you're not meant to be in that job you're not meant to be in that situation so me using that rod is to correct you is to move you away from that and then the staff is to draw you closer to God, all right? And the staff represents the truth. The truth comforts you. The rod is like the hard times, okay? When the rod hits you, it toughens you. Then the staff draws you closer to know the truth about the situation. And I hope this is clear enough for somebody. And that was why the Bible also said, um, I think it says, spoil the, the child or spare the rod and spoil the child so which means that once a child makes a mistake as a parent you have the right to um use the rod okay to correct them i'm not saying hit them i'm saying um correction can also be with words not with um you know with objects okay you correct them like what you did is wrong once you correct that child they might not be comfortable at that time with that correction but once um once you make it known to them as time goes on they are waking to the truth okay as to why they were being corrected in regards to what it did but for me when your child should do something wrong as a parent don't just sit there and watch correct them because that's what god does as well okay sometimes you go through those closed um, doors you're like god why did this door close for me that is god's protection and that is when the rod is being placed upon your life to correct you so verse 5 says thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies which means that after you've gone through the valley of the shadow of death and you fear not because you know that regardless god will comfort you um then God will prepare a table of victory, blessings, abundance, increase, testimony in the presence of those that mocked you, that despised you while you were going through the valley of the shadow of death phase. God will exalt you, bless you in the presence of those that despised your soul awakening. Um, once you are on this path or you've gone through this process with God, with the divine, that is when God prepares this table before you in the presence of your enemy. All right. Um, five, um, verse 5b says, thou anointed my head with oil. So which also clearly means that after you've successfully gone through that phase, God anoints your head as the chosen one because you overcame adversity. God anoints you with divine grace, honor, victory. Okay. And also the anointing is a seal. The anointing is a seal, the seal of divine protection, divine increase, divine favor. Okay, so that's what I want you to know. Um, also, it says, my cup runneth over, which means that your cup of blessings, of favor, of abundance, of grace multiplies. Okay, so you then move into your season of exceedingly above all that you've asked. So when your cup run over, okay, no mortal man can turn it off. No demon, no entity can turn it off. It flows from generation to generation because you followed the divine guideline. So um, I want you to take note of the number one and the number six which is the last part of the scripture so psalms 23 verse 6 the last path okay which is six is the affirmation of god's word and its manifestation so verse 6 says surely which means most definitely compulsory it's a must that god's goodness and mercy shall follow you and it says surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life this means you have now stepped fully into the goodness and the mercies of god which is your divine birthright so you are meant to enjoy god's goodness and divine mercies all the days of your life this is not this is not a choice this is your right 
by divine right. Once you allow the Lord be your guide, your, your teacher, surely you will enjoy, you shall experience the goodness and the mercies of God. So it is by divine right that things are meant to work for you. It is by divine right that things are meant to work in your life without struggle. But first, you must pay the price of walking through the valley of the shadow of death. Okay? Um, so I have a quote that says, For with great suffering comes honor. So you have to go through that. When I say suffering, I'm not saying physically suffering. It's the process. Is the process. All right. So the goodness and mercies of God in your life is a divine seal. So by divine right, you are meant to enjoy divine goodness in your business, in your job, in your relationship, in your life. And the mercies of God purifies your soul and clears the path for you. And then it says, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And the house represents the presence of God, okay? So, and in the presence of God, there is so much abundant goodness, all right? So, which means that you will dwell in the presence of God. You will enjoy every goodness that is in the presence of God, all right? So, that is what I want you to know. So, if you are currently on a soul journey and it feels like you're going through so much, I need you to trust that you are on a journey with God, you are on a divine journey with God. So um, I will leave this message here. And I hope that this message gives you peace and clarity. Till next time, divine blessings.